Okay, everybody, thank you. Thank you for taking the time today to come to our webinar where we can look at the differences between the Wu style and the Yang style, but not only the differences, there's similarities as well. I'm Diane Bailey. I'm the creator of the Open the Door to Tai Chi system. And my guest today is Chris Cinnamon. He's the founder and the head instructor of Chicago Tai Chi, we were just talking about right in the heart of Chicago. And I look forward to um, hearing what his experience is with Tai Chi. But I also look forward to, because he's not only the founder of Chicago Tai Chi and the head instructor there, but he's also the author of this much needed book, Tai Chi for Knee Health. And I say much needed because there are many, many people um, all over the world that are unnecessarily sedentary because they have knee pain. And if we can help them with Tai Chi, if we can help them reduce that knee pain or even eliminate it, then they can get back to an active lifestyle, which we all know is the key to aging well. So I really look forward to hearing about how Tai Chi has helped you there. And Chris, I'm gonna give you the floor because I want you to tell us <clears throat> your background, you know, what led you to Tai Chi? Just tell us your story. I'm, I'm delighted to do that, Diane. So uh, <clears throat> much of my adulthood could be characterized as uh, high performance under high stress. Uh, after graduating from Williams College, I flew jets for the Navy for seven years, uh, carrier-based fighters, F-14 Tomcats. And uh, few things get your heart racing than uh, launching off and landing back on an aircraft carrier, especially at night. But that's what I did. That was my work uh, and was highly trained, loved it, uh, and then had an opportunity to uh, leave the Navy to go back to school. And so I went to law school at the University of Michigan, and that was an intense experience. Uh, and that, that was followed by 22 years of law practice at, uh, at a high level. I, I, the latter part of that, I was managing partner of a firm that I founded. So in addition to uh, practicing law, I also ran the business. And that, you know, that time was characterized by uh, high stress, long hours, lots of work. Now, I'd always, always been an athlete, played football in college, uh, you know, done all kinds of exercise, resistance training, distance running, couple marathons, competitive martial arts. I'm a third degree black belt in Shotokan karate, competed in tournaments. Uh, and, you know, you know part, part, part of that, uh, that trajectory included uh, multiple knee injuries, two knee surgeries, and then diagnoses of osteoarthritis in both knees. And we'll, we'll, we'll get to that when we, when we get into the book. But the, 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 the years of intense living, if you will, um, began to catch up. And I was sitting at my desk one night, you know, working late, and this uh, realization hit me like a lightning bolt. And it was this, and I remember it so clearly. The way I am working is shortening my life. The way I am working is shortening my life. And, and I felt it at a cellular level. You know, I was like, wow, uh, I didn't like that. But I didn't know, I didn't really know what to do about it because I had, you know, trained to perform and produce and achieve. And that, that was you know, wired into me. So uh, then shortly after that, back when we had bookstores, I was in borders, you know, and I'd go into the martial arts section and I saw this book and it said the power of internal martial arts in chi by Bruce Francis. I said, oh, that's unusual. Let me let me check it out. So I read it and uh, I would characterize the writing as uh, delving into what could seem like some esoteric topics in a very authoritative, very clear way. And I said, hey, I got I got to. I gotta, you know, I got to get, get some more information about this guy. So that led to a one week workshop. Uh, and it, it was it was a Bagua workshop, it wasn't Tai Chi. And my body was not quite ready for Bagua. 
but uh, the teaching he put out led to this. And I, re I remember this clearly on the flight home. It was out in California and I was flying back to Chicago. And I wrote in my journal, I need to change my life to learn what I can from this guy in the time that I have. Nice. It was, it was like, boom, you know, transformative. And that led to, uh, you know, thousands of hours of training under him, uh, certification in Tai Chi and multiple Qigong sets. And uh, the, the realization that, hey, this is a practice that uh, can either, that has helped me organize my life so I no longer feel like I'm working in a way that shortens it. I don't feel that anymore. That's good. Uh, for sure. And then, then that, uh, that was impetus for a transition uh, from the law in an orderly succession plan with my law firm. And the decision to uh, really devote this part of my life to sharing the powerful benefits of Tai Chi and Qigong with a, a growing community. And that led to founding Chicago Tai Chi. We're in, we're in our 10th year. And as Chicago's Tai Chi, you guys teach mainly the Wu style, correct? Yes. And, it, um, and there, there's, there's a few reasons for that. I, I also periodically teach a yang style form that I love. You know, I love the, the, they're, they're a lot, the, there's much more similarities and differences, but there's some differences too that are just really uh, entertaining to explore. And, it, you know, some people may know, some people may not know, there are different styles where the Chen style started first and of Tai Chi and Yang came from that and Wu came next. Um, the, the youngest is soon, but um, in one of his, I was watching your instructor, Bruce Francis on YouTube, and he was explaining that Wu and Yang are actually very similar. Do you agree with that? Yes. Uh, the, the main difference is that most Yang style practice today is what we call large frame. Mm -hmm. Wu style is small frame. And that just refers to the size of the postures. But the, 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 you know, the applications, the fundamentals of the postures, the Neigong internal practices that you incorporate into uh, the Tai Chi is really common across the styles. And I want you to demonstrate, I mean, you and I had talked earlier and, and I, I do want you to demonstrate, but I want to explain some of our philosophy too, that both of us, um, there are some people that are stuck in, well, I only do the Yang style or I only do the Wu style. And um, it, to both of us, we agree that you become a better person, a better martial artist, a better overall, um, your exercise plan is better if you can learn as much about different styles as possible. And that's where, that's part of the impetus for doing this webinar here is because I want to expose people to the differences, but also they can see the similarities. So if you would, it, would you demonstrate, um, you and I had talked about some Yang style and some Wu style so we can see that difference, small frame, large frame. Sure. Uh, and uh, what I'll do, and, and you know, the audience, you can, you, can, you can sit back and watch, or you can get up and join me because I'll be, I'll be prepared to lead you through uh, a couple uh, Yang and Wu style movements recognizing there, there may be many young style practitioners out here and what I might be doing might be a little different than what, uh, what you do in your form. And uh, th that's just variations across styles and training. So there's, there's a posture in Yang style Tai Chi that most people would call in English ward off, or I refer to it as double hand pung. And it looks from the front, it looks something like this. From the side, it looks something like this. And to get into that in the, uh, the to get into that posture in the, the Yang style form that I like, you 
hold the ball, step, sink, shift weight, little twist step, and you get to the pause. And if you look at my stance, it's a little bit stretched out. Mm -hmm. And you look at my arms, they're stretched out. Now I'll show you the, the, the same posture in Wu style from a couple different perspectives. I'm, I'm gonna get into it and I'll be facing you. So that's double hand pong or ward off in Wu style. So let me give you the profile view. So you, you can see my stance is a lot smaller. My, uh, my feet are more underneath my structure than here. And then the arm shape, uh, while my, my elbows are getting uh, you know, further away from my body and I'm connecting to my back and I'm lengthening, which is an internal practice that you do, but it's also more contained than this. But beyond that, it's uh, the energies you're manifesting. If you get into that, that stuff in Tai Chi, you don't have to, but if you do, the energies are the same. The one distinction that I feel in my body from this, and you, you can get up and try this. So you get into a ward off and just let your shoulders soften. Get your arms lengthening out. Lengthen your spine. And just you feel pretty stretched out. You know, this, this, uh, um, I feel the stretch in my legs, in my arms. And now let's get into, uh, Fami, we'll get into that same posture in the Wu style. So we'll stand like this. And uh, I will do this mirror image. So when I move this, the hand on this side, you do, you, you move the hand on this side on you. Uh, and this is an instructional technique that we've uh, adopted for purposes of Zoom classes. So, so just follow me from whatever neutral posture uh, you start in. Now, shift weight to your right. Bring your arms up, sink in your legs a little bit. Keep your weight on the right, stretch up through the legs, stretch out through the, the arms and fingers and the top of the head. Now, wrap. Have your unweighted heel come up. Take a little step, land lightly on the heel. Take your left pulse. That's the posture. Now, feel what that feels like. Well, however that feels in your body. Now, if, you're, if you, you soften your shoulders and your elbows come away from your torso, you'll feel that nice stretch in your back. But you might also feel, if you, can, if you can feel in your abdominal cavity and your thoracic cavity, this wrapping, this coming in, it can create this gentle compression. So, and that is massaging organs. And that feels a little, in my body, that feels different than this. Not better or worse, but just different. And the, the, the distinction I draw in my practice between Yang style and Wu style and it's really a matter of degree, you know, it's not a big difference, but Wu style tends to work my insides more readily sooner. Yang style tends to stretch my muscles and connective tissue uh, sooner. How fun. I, you know, you, you think about small and large frame, like in that way of internal and external and as we talk about in the 10 essentials, you know, internal and external are united. Um, what you were just demonstrating, you could see containing the chest and raising the back. You can see how some of those are um, incorporated actually with both styles. And, and that's, that's fun for me to see as well. Um, much less, uh, much more, um, I like the word contained, that you used, you know, Wu is a much more contained um, movement style. Uh, and I, uh, you know, I'm very intentionally and clearly working my liver, spleen and kidneys in, in a number of Wu style movements. Uh, and I, you know, I do that in Yang style too, but it is, it, it's just a little easier to access. 
uh, with the small frame cells. But I, but again, this is a matter of degree, and I want to I want to I'll show one other Wu style posture, the iconic single whip. All right, and it looks something like this. All right, so that would be that would be a Wu style single whip. But let's say it's summertime, or you're by the ocean, it's warm, and you you feel like stretching out. You, you can you can get bigger in Wu style too. So that's that's a Wu style single whip too. So it's really a matter of degree. And, then, and we talked about it. I want to get back into what when you referred to the energies. I do want to get back to that. But I also want to get um, make the point of what you're just saying is degrees of differences that, um, you know, you and I have the same philosophy of perfection in when you're practicing your Tai Chi. And, you know, the way I say it is, I want you to do Tai Chi to help your body be the best it can be. Um, and if we need to modify something for your body, then we will. I mean, what, I, I know what you say in the book and I, I, wanna, I wanna get to that, you know, that 70% rule, but, you know, tell us your philosophy as far as when we're doing differences in Tai Chi. All right, so I will, uh, this happens a lot in class. Chris, am I doing this right or wrong? <laughs> and my answer pretty consistently is this. In my teaching, you're not gonna hear me use the words right and wrong very much, unless you're doing something to hurt yourself. And I'll tell you that's wrong because you're hurting yourself. Right. It's really matters of degree. And, and in learning Tai Chi, you know, you want to get it right. You wanna get, you know, get the movements more or less accurate and then a degree of an increasing degree of smoothness and connection as you progress so that you know a 27 move short form eventually becomes one continuous move all right, right. that's what you're going for but um then when when that when it, when your tai chi stabilize, stabilizes at that level then it there's opportunities to vary to adjust movements for very specific reasons, uh, working your body one way or another, accommodating an injury, accommodating a condition, accommodating how you feel on any particular day, exploring one potential martial application as opposed to another out of the same move. And when Tai Chi gets at that level, then it, then it can become highly personal, highly creative, and so much fun. Right. Right. Yeah. And, you know, I like to talk about, I say, Tai Chi is not a horizontal learning event. It's not, you just learn the moves, you learn to string them together, and that's it. That's it. Tai Chi is so much more. I like to think of it as a vertical learning event, that you're adding more and adding more and adding more, not necessarily more movements, not, you know, learning the next posture, the next posture, the next posture, but you're learning how to make the postures that you know better and better for your body and adding the principles to it, understanding the energies. So go ahead, Chris, you were going to say something. Yeah. Um, and, and there, you really nicely, Diane, describe a potential progression mm -hmm. at the same time. Uh, people need to move. And it is the lack of physical activity that is the source of many chronic health conditions that cost a lot of money over the society and also really uh, make life less pleasant for those that are enduring those conditions. It, it's, uh, it's well settled that increasing physical activity uh, helps reduce the risk of those chronic diseases. You know, I'm, I'm an exercise physiologist. I mean, I'm immersed in that stuff. So if a person does Tai Chi and then all they want to do is do the physical movements, uh, that is very valuable. Mm -hmm. And 
you don't need to get into the qigong layer you don't need to get into the other internal practices you can do or the philosophy or the spirituality to get a lot of benefits from the physical movements of tai chi that right. said if you want to get into those other la layers um tai chi has uh ample depth to keep us learning growing entertained for uh, uh, multiple lifetimes. Right. And would you, would you take a minute just to demonstrate and explain how those energies, the Pong, Lu, Yi, An, uh, explain those to the audience, explain how you're feeling them and, and demonstrate them with the different movements as well. Uh, I'll be gl glad to. There's four principal energies and there's four secondary energies. The four principal energies, uh, I use the Chinese terms, the Tom trained, Peng, Ji, Lu, An. And they roughly translate to ward off, press forward, uh, roll back, and press down. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm going to get up and do it. And I welcome any of you that want to get up and join me to do so. We'll do this together. So... So stand in whatever initial posture you use. And uh, I'll do a Wu style commencement. And, but, uh, you know, Yang style commencement or most commencements are very similar. And the, the energies you manifest are similar. So do the one you want. So the first energy you manifest in commencement is Peng. And Peng connotes rising, expanding energy. It has a lightness and fullness to it. Like I've heard it described as the energy that keeps a boat afloat, right? And you manifest that in the first part of commencement. So follow me, whatever version of commencement you want. So here, Peng, rising, expanding. Reset. Peng, rising, expanding. Reset. One more, pong. So you're sinking into your legs and feel for any sense of the arms rising up. And then G, G connotes energy going straight out. And that can be straight ahead, that can be straight to the sides, up, down, wherever. But it's concentrated and it's going out. So we manifest that in the second count of commencement. So follow me, please. Pong, rising, expanding. G, straight out. Reset, Pong. Now you may feel energy or may, you may not, and then either way it's okay, but you may feel something going on in your hands. And what's going on in your hands? Uh, who, well, possibilities include, this is promoting circulation of blood and other fluids to your hands, and you may be able to feel that, so follow me, Pong. G, just feel your hands and fingers, whatever you feel. All right, the third principal energy in Tai Chi is Liu. And Liu connotes absorption. It is the yin counterpart to the yang of Ji. So Ji is going straight out, Liu is absorbing. So we manifest that in the third count of commencement. So follow me, please. Pong. Rising, expanding. Ji, straight out. Liu, absorb. Reset. Pong, rising, expanding. G, straight out. Now feel your hands. Now you absorb. You feel anything come back into your hands? Reset. One more. Pong, rising, expanding. G, straight out. Lu, absorb. And then the fourth, fourth principle energy we manifest in Tai Chi is An. An. And An kind of downward compression. It's the yin counterpart to the rising, expanding of Peng. And we manifest that in the last counter commencement. So follow me, if you like. Peng, rising, expanding. Ji, straight out. Liu, absorb. An, down, heavy, heavy, heavy. Feel it in your feet and your hands. Peng, rising, expanding. Ji, straight out. Lu, absorb, on, downward compression. So, and, you know, whether, what you feel when you 
do that. Uh, there, you know, there's a lot of, lot of variation, but there's an idea in Tai Chi that by, and, and if, if you go through a form, uh, you cycle through those energies in most moves in, in different combinations. It's very symmetrical in, in commencement. In more advanced moves, you'll be punging up one arm as you on down the other and you'll mix them up in a variety of ways. One thing that's going on, the, an idea is that you are, by manifesting those energies, you are working with your circulatory system. Pung opens the arteries. G moves blood to the extremities. Lu draws that uh, blood back on, compresses the arteries. And how cool is that? I mean, we think of cardiovascular exercise again, our heart rate up. Right. which is really important, really important and very valuable. But in Tai Chi, if you incorporate uh, manifesting those energies, you may be working with the whole uh, vascular system in ways that promote flexibility, promote health of vascular tissue. And, you know, as we age, the trend is to go the other direction, right? <laughs> they, they get stiffer. Uh, and, and so th this idea of, and, and uh, depending on your degree of sensitivity, you know, most people get this over, you can feel how you, you're moving fluids around in your body when you do Tai Chi. And it's... Um, I love how it also is, uh, and some people are afraid of this part of Tai Chi. It is a martial art and it is a way to address an opponent. And if you think about the different energies, Pong, Lu, An, Ji, you have those different ways to address an opponent. You're not always G, that mm -hmm. you can't. There are times where you have to roll back, where you have to yield, and that's actually to your advantage. So understanding that um, flow, if you will, with that energy is important because you are addressing an opponent. And sometimes I like to say that opponent may not be a real person. It may not be somebody right in front of you. That opponent may be something internal. It may be negative self-talk. It might be cancer. It might be, you have knee issues. <laughs> and, and again, we're back to the health benefits of Tai Chi. We do it so people can be healthier. We want to um, give this wonderful form of exercise to people so that they can keep moving. And I, I know in your book, you, I, your journey that you talked about at the beginning, we left out one little piece. You also went back to school to become an exercise physiologist. And that piece of that puzzle came into play as you developed your book for knee health, right? So yeah. I want you to um, talk a little bit about the book, talk about your own knee issues. You know, you did some, but how did Tai Chi help you with that? And then demonstrate some of the exercises that are from the book as well. Glad to. So, um, you know, played college football, competitive martial arts, pounded my knees for years and had injuries couple surgeries, and then uh, beginning really kind of mid-30s, the chronic pain started coming in. Uh, and it initially be occasional, and then it would be pretty much all the time. I mean, it, it, it hurt to go upstairs, go downstairs, get out of a chair, get in a chair, sit at a desk. Uh, you know, eventually had them checked out and had diagnosis of osteoarthritis in both knees. There, there's 10 million adults in the U.S. with osteoarthritis in their knees. I'm one of them. Uh, and the, the trajectory of knee osteoarthritis, it's viewed as a degenerative disease. So it doesn't get better. It gets worse. And it, the, the hallmark is a deterioration of a tissue called articular cartilage, which is a fascinating tissue that uh, coats the ends of bones in a joint that moves. And it, uh, you know, I, I got into the, 
molecular structure of the tissue. And it's just fascinating. And I talk a little bit about it in the book. But cartilage uh, has no blood supply and, and no nerves. So when, uh, when, it, when it gets damaged, it doesn't heal. And then uh, when that cartilage starts to break down and the person continues to move in a way that exacerbates the breakdown and it just gets worse. And then the cartilage wears away, the bones get pressure on them, they start to distort and the, you get a downward spiral. Pain, decreased function, decreased joint health. Uh, and then, you know, the, the end game's uh, a joint replacement, which, you know, is, can provide a lot of relief for people that, you know, have uh, kind of end stage knee osteoarthritis, but it's still major surgery. Yeah. And given the choice between getting on the table and staying off the table, my preference is to stay off the table as much as I can. So, you know, I had that experience, chronic knee pain for years. And then I started getting into Tai Chi and I began experiencing, hey, my knees are starting to feel a little better. They don't hurt as much. And at this point today, I have virtually no knee pain. That's I've, got, I've got arthritis in there and I know how to hurt it, but yeah. I don't. Uh, and I attribute much of that transformation to Tai Chi and uh, developed a program that focuses on the knee health specifics in Tai Chi and have distilled that into Tai Chi for knee health. The, and the, the, the program, the, the, the exercises taught, uh, it's a simplified Tai Chi movement set. So it doesn't have a particular style. It's called Tai Chi Circling Hands. My main teacher developed it and it was like the ideal platform for this. And, and through the program, and it's all explained in the book and there's associated videos. Uh, first, you develop an increasing ability to feel your knees. Face it, most people never feel their knees unless they hurt. I think a lot of people are not body aware, Chris. That's no. very yeah. true, yeah. right? Yeah, and, but the knees are richly innervated and in that they const those nerves constantly transmit information to the brain that if you become aware of it, can really help take care of your knees. Right. And then, uh, then the next step is to learn how to align your knees in an increasingly refined way so that, and we'll, we'll get up and do this so that uh, you find what's called the sweet spot. And that's a, that's a place where your alignments are such that the pressures in your knees are even. Not, not, not pressure forward, not pressure either side, not pressure back, but they're even. Okay. And then through training, you learn how to move in increasingly sophisticated ways staying on your sweet spot perfect and by doing that if, if you have knees like mine that have spots of arthritis i no longer irritate those spots of arthritis and that, that's doing tai chi and that's doing everything else in my life too i mean i i can feel it when i hit one of those spots and i uh I'm reflexively now uh, adjust my alignments and do some other internal practices in the knee that take the pressure off and as a consequence of now several years of not irritating the, the deteriorated tissue, it doesn't hurt. Plus there's one other piece. And this is hypothesis, all right? This is a hypothesis, but there's multiple studies using Tai Chi as an intervention for knee arthritis and they consistently find uh, reduced pain and increased function in subjects that have knee arthritis and do Tai Chi. But the, here's, here's my hypothesis. One of the things you do in Tai Chi is uh, consistently shift weight, load up one leg, unload it, load it up, but you do it in this slow, controlled, complete way. And what that does in the knee joint is compress cartilage and then release it. Compresses cartilage and releases it. I mean, it's introducing a mechanical force. And cartilage, this is so fascinating as a tissue, cartilage responds to mechanical force by making more what's called the extracellular matrix, more cushion. 
Mm -hmm. So my hypothesis is that not only did Tai Chi uh, help me learn how to move my knees in a way, align my knees in a way that does, doesn't irritate the arthritis, but I have made the healthier, the healthy cartilage a little healthier and there's a little more cushion. And that, that extra cushion then provides another way to take the pressure off the deteriorated tissue. That's fascinating, Chris. I love that. Because yeah. you know, people, and, people often say, Tai Chi, how can it be exercise? How can it be good for me? Uh, yeah, maybe it helps me relax, but is it really doing anything for my body? And we've already talked about you know, the cardiovascular benefits, the relaxation, but if your theory, <laughs> if your hypothesis is correct, you know, that, that takes it to another level of it's actually giving, helping your healthy cells be healthier. Yeah, and there, there is research that uh, validates that cartilage responds to mechanical pressure by producing more cushion. Great. Uh, there hasn't been a study that does that with a Tai Chi intervention. So I, you know, I say that as a hypothesis, but I'll tell you this, I know that's going on in my knees. <laughs> I know it. W would you show us um, just that in the book, in the book, I really encourage everybody, we'll tell you at the end how to get a copy of the book. And I do encourage you all to get this because the, the exercises in it are so well laid out. Um, you can you can start doing this as soon as you get the book, but um, I want I want them to experience just at least a little of the circling hands. Okay, glad to. So for those of you that would like to get up, get up and join me, and uh, uh, establish a comfortable posture. We call this neutral posture. And to the extent you can align your feet roughly under your hips rather than a wider stance. And if you can, if you can uh, adjust your feet so they're more or less parallel, that's what you want to do. Then feel your knees. Get your mind in your knees. And there, there's lots to feel. Temperature, pressure, uh, orientation to other body parts. The, the, the nerves in the knees are, are sending that to your brain all the time. So I encourage you to feel it. And when you get your mind in your knees, one of the sensations you'll start to feel is a sensation of pressure caused by the weight of the body above, coming down through the femur, and contacting the tibial plateau and then going down to the feet. And you can feel it. So just feel the sense of pressure in your knees. And then let's move it around a little. Now keep this movement small, just so you feel something going on in your knees, not so that you create any discomfort. So move the pressure a little bit forward. Move the pressure a little bit back. Move the pressure a little to one side. Move the pressure a little to the other side. You can feel it. Now, forward, one side, back, other side. So we're doing some circles with our knees now. Forward, side, and just feel it. You can feel that pressure move around in your knees. Now, adjust your knees so that that sensation of pressure is as even and balanced as you can get it. So that you do not feel more pressure to the front, more pressure to the back, more pressure to either side. And when you get that, you are on what we call the sweet spot. And that is the orientation of your knee, the alignment of your knee where the pressure is even. And it's really small. So, and you can find out, so with the small movement as you can from your sweet spot, just move some pressure forward. And, and you, you, you'll feel that pressure move with very little movement. Then come back to the sweet spot. Pressure's balanced, even. Now move it just a little to the side and you can feel it go over there with hardly any knee movement. Then back to the sweet spot. Then over to the other side. 
You can feel that pressure move around. When you tune into your knees, and in Tai Chi for Knee Health, we start doing the standing, and then we do it through uh, increasingly sophisticated movement. So let, let's try that for now. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn, uh, I'll give you the profile view here. So now, take a stance, so just put a foot forward. And we'll take the hands out for a moment. And now, just shift your weight back, feel your knees. It feels different now because most of your weight's on it, but you can still get on the sweet spot. Now shift the weight forward, feel your knee, try and get on the sweet spot. So you're not jamming it forward, it's not collapsing in or out, it's, you're on the sweet spot. And then shift weight back, shift weight forward. And everybody that goes through the Tai Chi Knee Health Program, and I've taught this live to hundreds, over a weekend with some practice, they start getting a feel of how to move and either stay on or correct to the sweet spot. People that, that haven't had the training, you'll, you'll, you know, you'll have them shift weight and turn their hips and their knees will be moving all around. Now watch this. We talk about the fundament, the two fundamental knee alignments, knee over the foot, kneecap aligned with toes. And you add a weight shift and a hip rotation to that. And you can see my knee is not moving much. Can you see my knee, Diane? Yes, yes. All right. Now, if I, if I ask 100 people to shift weight and turn, turn their hips without Tai Chi knee health training or other kind of training to focus on this, and there's not much out there, watch my knee. Ow. <laughs> yeah, the, the, so it collapses in, twists in, there's pressure on the, in the medial knee compartment, the area where um, osteoarthritis of the knee is most common, particularly in women. And when the knee collapses in, you're putting pressure on that. And if there's deteriorated tissue, that's exacerbating it. But if you keep your knee solid, you don't do that. And it's really a matter of training. And How's that, Diane? That was, it was so fascinating. And, you know, as, you, as I'm watching you look at, at, as you're moving, you know, that's actually a simple pushing chi movement as you were doing that. And of course, we're moving from the Dantian. All of these are principles of Tai Chi that uh, people that are, don't do Tai Chi at all, they don't even understand how their body is moving. And they will often lead with shoulders or, or lead with their head. Um, and, and that, again, throws your alignment off. That throws your columns off. And what we teach in Tai Chi is absolutely critical to whole body movement. It's not just for the Tai Chi class. It's for your entire life of all your movement. Because once you learn how to control your body movement in Tai Chi, you can start translating that to when you're standing in the grocery store, when you're walking through the park, whatever it is, you know, this is, um, that's part of why I wanted you to come on and talk about this because, uh, you know, it, it, it helps obviously that you have the practice, you've had the years of experience, but you also have the experience of the knee issues where um, I don't have knee issues. I am hoping that I, don't I work at not having them? <laughs> Good for you. But but all the same, it's so much uh, more relatable to people when they can say, "Well, Chris had it, and now look what he's doing with Tai Chi and how it helped him." So, um, and then, let me let me layer in one thing because you know you've you've attracted a wonderful uh, crowd of practitioners or people interested in Tai Chi, and there's a lot of variation in instruction. Yes. And, and there can be a lot of Tai Chi instruction that does not focus uh, on knee alignments. And there, there's a condition called Tai Chi knees where people do Tai Chi and their knees hurt. And the reason their knees uh, are hurting from Tai Chi is that they just haven't been trained in how to stabilize the knee, align the knee through very dynamic movement. Right. And, uh, uh, next to no one gets that unless they get the training and the instruction. But once you do, then you stabilize your knee and you 
uh, maximize the health benefits of Tai Chi for all the tissues in the knee and minimize the risks. Absolutely. I want to get into some of the questions and, and you guys have figured out, thank you for putting questions in the chat box. Um, and I will read through some of these. Um, and Julia, he did kind of answer that about the book of incorporating. Julia asked, does your book incorporate the Wu style or other styles as well? And really the book is about um, knee health and, and aligning and it's, it's kind of this conglomeration. Um, is that correct, Chris? Is, am I saying that right? Uh, the, the movement set uh, you learn in Tai Chi for Knee Health is Tai Chi based but it is simplified. It is um, more, uh, you, you do more reps of the movements. It, it involves weight shifting, hip rotation, circular movements of the arms and hands in multiple planes, but um, it, it's easier to learn. And yeah. that's why it, it's a wonderful set as a platform for uh, Tai Chi for Knee Health. And Edward, you asked what's the difference between Tai Chi and Qigong. Um, I, I was actually just talking to uh, Violet Lee the other day and, and she's an expert in Qigong. Um, and she said it this way. She said, Qigong is the tree, Tai Chi is a branch. And I loved that. I thought that was a really good visual. Um, I, I like to say Qigong is the bigger umbrella and Tai Chi is a subset. But if you think about Tai Chi is, or excuse me, Qigong is the tree and Tai Chi is a branch. It's a piece of it, but there's a lot more um, involved with Qigong. Uh, and Tony, you said um, that you did read of a study that Tai Chi develops supporting muscles around the knees um, and they can take 85% of the weight off of the knee joint, acting kind of like a knee brace. Um, tai Chi fixed your chronic knee problems. And, and Chris, go ahead and address just some of that musculature as well. Around the knee. Uh, you know, one of, the, one of the recommendations for people with knee osteoarthritis is that they exercise. And the, you know, the body will respond to that exercise, muscles will tone and train. And the idea is strengthening muscles around the knee can help stabilize it and uh, reduce the tendency to put pressure into the joint and exacerbate the arthritis. The issue is uh, when you've got chronic knee pain, exercise is really hard to do. Uh, you know, pounding on a treadmill or whatever is just really hard to do. That's why Tai Chi is so ideal for, uh, as an exercise for people with issues in weight-bearing joints. Uh, you do weight shifts in a way that's smooth, gradual, controlled, so you're not pounding. And it's that pounding that's associated with so many kinds of exercise, even walking, that can irritate a diseased joint. Uh, because of the nature of Tai Chi form practice, it's slow. You can control that weight shift. You can stay out of the range of motion and the amount of loading that causes pain, enabling the muscles and, and all the other tissues in and around the knee to get benefit of movement, benefit of exercise, and gradually build up strength, tone, flexibility. Yep, absolutely. That uh, Gary just asked, can the placement of the hips help the knees stay in the correct position? Ah, uh, yes, but uh, the hips rotate and rotation is a fundamental movement component and certainly in Tai Chi, but in life. And it is the rotation of the hips that brings, that introduces the risk of torquing a knee, twisting forces, right? And the knee uh, evolved to be wonderfully strong in the vertical. So you could jump and, you know, do a lot of stuff up and down, but it's weak in the lateral. It's weak in twisting, all right? It's all, it's all connective tissue. Unlike the hip joint, it, you know, it's got a deep socket and, uh, you know, it's much, it's much stronger in rotation. So the, uh, 
if you want your hips to move like they evolved to move and not torque your knee, then that's where tai chi, the training in Tai Chi for knee health comes in, where you learn to, um, you know, I can get a fair, I, I can get a fair amount of, uh, of range of motion and hip rotation, and that knee's not moving. It's stable. And that's, that's the consequence of training. Without that training, you'll see a lot of this. Ow! <laughs> right. So Jay asked, and, and this is a, um, what I was going to ask for your information as well, but Jay already did it. He said, do, I, do you sell Tai Chi for knee health directly or do we order off of Amazon? So. Well, here, uh, let, me, let me share my screen if I can here. And let, uh, can, can you enable sh screen sharing? Let me see. Just a second. Sure. Make co-hosts. There, you should be able to do it now. All right, let's see what we can do here. All right, so uh, on your screen, you see the Chicago Tai Chi website, www.chicagotaichi.org. And if you wanna take a look at the book and get a free chapter, just click the Tai Chi for Knee Health tab. Well, that's all right. We, we just found a glitch for you. That's all right. <laughs> okay. So you click the Tai Chi for Knee, knee Health uh, tab and you'll come to uh, a page that talks about the book. You can get, there we go. There it is. Uh, and uh, you'll, you can get a free chapter and check it out. And then uh, you can buy it on Amazon. Awesome. That's pretty easy. Yeah. And, and this, this is, uh, and you'll read about this in the book, and I, I, you know, I want to emphasize it here. I hear from people around the world that are, are in the Tai Chi Health Program, and they have, they, they have questions, uh, and I, uh, I get right back to you. you know, I'm, I'm here to support people in their journey to, to healthy knees and moving again and uh, reach out. And what's your email address, Chris? The website is www.chicagotaichi.org. My email address is chris at chicagotaichi.org. That's pretty easy. I like that. I like easy. <laughs> um, Edward, you asked, is the book on Kindle? Yes, you just saw it on Amazon that it is on Kindle. Um, just Julia, you asked about his website. It's at chicagotaichi.org, O-R-G. And uh, Pam, we have, we have time for this one question. Um, and then we need to respect your base time. But uh, I want to get to this. Does, is grounding the feet essential in Tai Chi for knee health? No. The, uh, by stabilizing the knee alignments, you will tend to stabilize the ankles and feet. Um, now, as your Tai Chi advances, grounding and rooting the feet and the rest of the body is certainly part of it. But to get, to get the benefits for knee health, that's, that's not uh, an important element. And, and you're right, it is something that um, is, is essential in Tai Chi, yes, and it is essential for that energy flow, for addressing your opponent, for your posture. Um, but, um, you know, I really encourage you to get the book and you can start to see, uh, experience that sweet spot, right? And, and Chris, I wanted to get back to one more point from your book that is really essential 
is you call it the 70% rule. Um, again, we're working on Tai Chi as the benefit for helping people be the best they can be, not for per perfection, not for competition, et cetera. But um, just describe the 70% rule for me. All right. And the 70% rule first articulated to most Westerners sounds bizarre. All right. Because, we're, I mean, we're trained to push and uh, give 110%, you know, no pain, no gain, all that. The 70% rule is a Western formulation of the Taoist principle of moderation. <laughs> and as applied to Tai Chi and certainly Tai Chi for knee health, it's this. We do not do any movement or any practice greater than 70% of our maximum. Woo, we dial it back. And I, I wanna give you an example. So one, thing, one, one big objective in Tai Chi is to relax at ever deeper levels. And to relax at ever deeper levels, you need to stop inducing tension, all right? So I'm gonna do the first part of the commencement, watch my shoulders. Now I'm gonna to go to 100%. See my shoulders? They are not relaxed, all right? They are tense. Um, hands and fingers sticking out, you know, tension. Now I'm gonna do commencement in the 70, with about 70%. everything stays soft. And that softness promotes circulation of fluids. If you're moving energy, that might help move energy too. And then when you're dealing with, when you're dealing with a, a, a condition like arthritis where you have pain, you back it off even more. Your 100% is the onset of pain. So you move in a range of motion uh, within which you do not experience pain. I use, I use the material in Tai Chi for Knee Health to rehab my knee after my last surgery, six years ago or so. And so here's one movement. This is vertical circles plus uh, weight shift plus hip turn. So I did that movement two days after surgery and it looked like this. I put my crutches aside. Got a little stance. And that was my pain-free range of motion. Now it's not a big range of motion, but two things are happening. There's some movement going on in this tissue. And that movement promotes circulation of fluids, which promotes healing. And I'm not inducing any pain. So I'm not getting the tension and the irritation of traumatized tissue uh, that, you know, would result in pain signal. So uh, at a you know at a practice level, it's keeping soft and not moving into a range of motion that induces tension for healing. It's not moving in a range of motion that uh, induces pain, and that that could, however small. Right, and that's that's where we we both agree in our teaching of Tai Chi that that's where we. It, tai Chi is so wonderful and there's so many benefits to it that we want to bring those benefits to people. And by allowing that, giving them that space to work within that 70% allows people to be healthier and to move. Again, we're back to that whole statement of we want people to move and we want people to have an active lifestyle in a pain-free way. Um, and I, we both believe that Tai Chi is an important piece of that puzzle. Um, in the open the door to Tai Chi system that I developed in, in teaching people how to teach Tai Chi, that was one of my goals is to be able to get a whole uh, uh, a army of instructors so that more and more and more people can do Tai Chi and do it in a way that is helping them get the benefits of Tai Chi. So Chris, I really appreciate you taking the time today to go through some of the Wu style, some of the Tai Chi for me health stuff. Um, it's so important for people to understand. I know that we didn't get to 
some of the questions, you can um, email me directly, diane at taichisystem.com. That, that also has the information on our video membership site where you can start to learn some Tai Chi. Or if you're interested in certification, it also has that information, taichisystem.com. And you can email me if there's questions that I can answer, or you can email Chris at chris at chicagotaichi.org, O-R-G. We'll both, we do respond to those emails. Believe me, we want to hear from you. We want to help you be a better practitioner for Tai Chi for your own body. And if you're interested in being an instructor, we want to encourage you so that your community can have the benefit of Tai Chi as well. So Chris, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, this- Diane, you are welcome. And thank you. And thank you for uh, all the people that have joined us. And, and I, a Taoist bow to you. Yes, thank you very much. Um, we will send out a replay to everybody who registered. So if you're watching this on the replay, that's great. Again, it's Chris at ChicagoTaiChi.org or Diane at TaiChiSystem.com. I hope you have a good day. We'll talk to you later. Thank you. Bye-bye.